Hello, my name is Brad and I'm learning art. In fact, I'm always learning art. If you've been on this channel for a long time, I was kind of thrown into the whole art thing uh, several years ago when I started a channel. And then I thought, you know what? I want to learn art. And it's been a while since I've actually talked about my art journey and what I'm learning and that sort of thing. And I thought this might be a good opportunity to kind of revisit that and talk about the things I'm learning and what I'm struggling with and how other YouTubers here on this platform have been helping me out lately and what I've been watching. And so that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk about my work, what I'm doing, and some of the people that have inspired me. So let's let's start that. And the first YouTuber I want to talk about, and I can't believe I'm saying this out loud, PewDiePie. So if you watch a lot of art videos on YouTube, I'm sure the algorithm has served up to you a reaction to some of PewDiePie's videos over the last few weeks and months. And basically what he's been doing is he's been teaching himself how to draw and he's been doing a killer job at it. It's just so fascinating to see someone go from, you know, a little bit of knowledge maybe they drew in high school or drew when they were a kid and they're just picking it up now as an adult and seeing that progress when they really throw themselves at it day after day after day. So he has two videos now. One is like the first 40 days and then he has a second video that covers like the next 40 days, a little bit more than 40 days. And he goes through his sketchbook and he talks talks about his process. And the main thing he does that I think is really, really good is he looks at anime. He wants to draw anime girls and he focuses just on that for the entire time. And early on when he's showing you his sketchbook, the stuff is just not good at all. But as he goes, it gets a little better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And what's also fascinating is how he shares the frustration. Oftentimes in his sketchbook, you will see him drawing a face and there's just scratches on it, especially early on the first few weeks. And that's totally normal. And that's something I want to do all the time now. And as I watched him go, it made me rethink education and how I approached it. Like when I was putting together my course, I thought, oh, let's teach the basics. Okay, we'll teach one point perspective, then two point perspective, and three point perspective. Then we'll draw everyday objects and we'll start really simple, like something that's kind of squarish. And then maybe it's like a curved monitor. Or maybe we're drawing something round or we're adding a whole bunch of squares together. And learning those fundamentals is great and useful, but I'm also seeing how useful it can be to focus on one thing, whether it's like anime girls or whether you're focusing on hands or just taking that one thing that's kind of hard for you to draw and just going over and over and over again at it. At one point in the video, he draws something and he loves it. And then he tries for days, maybe even weeks to like do something just as good and he can't. And I feel that so hard. I also think his use of reference, for example, he's drawing from anime that he likes. He's not just drawing from memory, makes a ton of sense. And if you're just learning to draw, that's a great idea. A lot of people see that as like cheating, like using a reference, but it's really not. If you're learning music or learning an instrument, you're not writing your own music. You're playing other people's music. So as a learning tool, it's, it's totally normal. Anyway, I could go on and on about these videos. Really worth the watch if you have time. The next channel I want to talk about is Jackie Drushko's channel. She's a character designer. She's has background in animation. She's done a lot of cool stuff. She's actually worked in the industry and rolling through her playlists, you can see like just so many great videos. A lot of these videos, she's talking about how she approaches problems or how she approaches projects. And I think that's so incredibly valuable because everybody looks at these things from a different perspective. So a lot of times in her videos, she'll take art that people have submitted and she'll redraw it. Great thing to do, but hearing how she approaches things compared to how other people who are maybe making similar videos would approach the same thing, I think is fascinating. Partly because she's got a real graphical style, you know, a real, I don't wanna say blocky. I think graphic design is what I think about. It's like this marriage between illustration and graphic design where the layout really matters. And hearing how she kind of goes through the process to kind of marry those two things, I think is really interesting. She's also someone who works really heavily from reference and, and like pulls a lot of interesting things out of fashion. And you could really tell because her characters have such a great sense of style. So she just released a character design course that you can purchase. And since I've been using her YouTube video, 
videos for the last few months. I thought, sure, why not? Like, I'll take it. And it's one of those things that just hit me at the right time. A lot of times when you're learning art, like just finding the right thing at the right time is exactly what you need. And that's what this course is. With a lot of my illustrations, what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll say, okay, I'm reviewing this thing. I need a drawing to draw. And I, I have a limited amount of time to like sketch something out and create it for the video to get it out on time. And so I tend to fall back on what's worked in the past. And so I feel lately, especially in the last year or so, that a lot of the work I've done feels like other work I've done. I don't, I don't feel like I'm growing much. And so one of the early exercises in the course was to take a character that you had designed and then take the principles that we had talked about and the example she had shown in that segment and recreate the character. It's such a simple thing, but when you take a character that you just drew the way you would draw anything when you're kind of on autopilot and sketching something out, and then rethink it from a different point of view, it just really opened up my mind as to like how to start implementing that with my own characters. Anyway, I've just started the course, I'm not that far in, but so far I'm, I'm really digging some of the results I'm getting from it. Another channel I'm really liking right now is Wyatt Manga. He's been around for a while and he's published, I think he has four books now? Yes, he just released book four of Apple Black. So just kind of scrolling through his channel, he's got a lot of tips and tutorials and how to's and that sort of thing. But what makes his channel really interesting to me is that since he's a working illustrator and he's actually producing these books, every time he does a tutorial or he talks about something, a lot of the things that he's learning about and thinking about for his books ends up like just kind of naturally coming out in the videos. So he isn't just thinking about what's the coolest pose, he's thinking about the cover and okay, how is the cover gonna sell? Or he's thinking about the illustration in the context of the story and what kind of message or what he's trying to lead you into with that story while he's drawing it. And then he's just sprinkling in things that he's going through like, okay, we've gotta translate this book into French. How are we gonna do that? I'm gonna group another channel into this section, which is Jay Holt, the illustrator. Cause I like his channel for a lot of the same reason that I like Wyatt's channel. He's working on a comic, he's working on graphic novels. So a lot of the things he's talking about are specifically things he's learning or has learned while he was creating his comics. So in like a recent video, he's talking about like how can you make a career out of this or in another video he's talking about like the inking process and what goes into that and some of the things he's learned along the way so for whatever reason that's just where my head's been at lately is learning from illustrators who are actually working on projects i just seem to be getting a lot of really good stuff out of that sort of thing as opposed to just the hey this is how you draw a hand or a foot or this is how you draw a pose those are great it just seems like lately I'm really digging the storytelling aspect of it, the communication aspect of it, the how can we use art to tell a story sort of thing. Switch gears, we'll talk about Celesi for a minute. Technically, she's more of a Twitch streamer. She spends more time there just doing a lot of art and talking through it live, but she has taken some of that stuff and made YouTube videos out of it, and they're really good YouTube videos, so she makes the list. Even though she only has a few YouTube videos, I think because of that background on Twitch, like there's a level of confidence in front of the camera and talking through her art and what she's doing, it just works really well. And so a lot of the things I'm learning from her are, yes, I'm learning a lot of great tips about art in general, but I'm also a video creator. So I'm always trying to make my videos better. And I'm thinking through that process of it too, of how to explain art within the context of a video format and how to do it well. So I think that's another thing that, I, that I've taken away from this channel. Which takes me to another channel that's kind of in a similar vein, and this is Dave Raposa, and his art is phenomenal. And he He's been doing a lot of live streams lately as well. His work is just so detailed and just so, I don't know, it's just cool. I don't have another word for it. And when I see work with just that level of, like that level of craftsmanship, that's the word I'm looking for. To see a master craftsman work live and just to watch it is fascinating. I haven't caught any of his streams live, but I've watched some of the replays over time and they are fantastic. They're all posted on his channel. So if you want to check that out, definitely do that. The last channel I want to talk about today is Kasem's channel. I love his artwork and a lot of the videos he has are just uh, really good tutorials. How to draw kids, master any art style, never draw babies. Never? I think one of the reasons I really like him is because he also has a dog cam in the corner of his video. So on one side, you'll see like his Procreate canvas set up. But on the other side, you'll see like a little picture of him and then his dog in the corner. This is another person who has done live streams and takes a lot of audience feedback and like incorporates that into his videos and again I think that's part of the reason I find him fascinating part of it is the art which is great and you could learn a lot there but part of it 
is just me trying to learn how to present this stuff better online. He's a guy who's worked in animation. He worked on the Castlevania animated series. So this is another example of someone who is a working professional who has also decided to share some of their knowledge and that sort of thing. And that's, again, something that kind of trickles into their work and trickles into their tutorials and live streams as they're going along. That just little bit of extra insight is just so good. So those are the YouTubers that I've been learning from lately. Who have you been learning from? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.